On Valentine's Day 2013, I was officially diagnosed with lung cancer at the National Institutes of Health in Bethesda, Maryland. I had no health insurance at the time, so I agreed to participate in a cancer research study at the recommendation of my sister. After meeting criteria, I went through the expected trajectory of chemotherapy, surgery, radiation, and completed this course of treatment with outstanding care, support, and compassion from the staff at NIH. Upon my discharge, the words I most clearly remember were, if the, if the cancer is going to come back, it will most likely be within 24 months. It did, and it has. I returned home to Texas after seven months of treatment to resume my life, which had now shifted drastically on multiple levels. While going through treatment, my mind, of course, was consumed with matters related to my physical health, managing my recovery, and healing. I made significant lifestyle changes with the intent of moving forward, while death now became at least half of that narrative. Contemplating my own death, walking hand in hand with contemplating my whole life up to this point, coming from a completely different perspective, revealed challenges I had not anticipated. Trying to return to some sort of normalcy proved more difficult now that I had been through the cancer experience. Constant reminders in my own head and well-intentioned reminders from the outside brought to the forefront what insidiously began to take over. The best way to describe this was my generalized feeling of being frozen in time. I look back on it as if standing in a block of ice, stuck, able to turn left or right, yet no movement forward, no movement backward, no movement whatsoever, just simply stuck. Then a question presented itself to me, which I now applied to every thought, feeling, decision, the past, the future, the question, what if? Every idea, any possibility, each moment became engulfed with what if the cancer returns? Immediately followed by no, I won't be able to do this or entertain that because I was paralyzed in the belief I had no future. Then a theme emerged spreading like a poison into the dark corners of my psyche, directly related to my own self-worth. This notion that maybe I deserve this because I am not a good person. Maybe this really is karma. What if there is an afterlife? What if I brought this upon myself? Is this payback for things I've done? I was not celebrating life not celebrating just being alive. I became obsessed with the past, projected into the future, asking questions I could not answer, and imagining in the worst possible way how this would all play out. Intellectually, I knew internalizing cancer was ridiculous, yet emotionally, it became all-encompassing. I did not know how to live in the uncertainty. I was stuck, frozen in time, in a block of ice. In late 2013, I received a call from my son suggesting I consider enrolling in a study he came across being conducted at Johns Hopkins. It was using psilocybin mushrooms to help alleviate the anxiety and depression related to a cancer diagnosis. Having never done psychedelics before, I thought, well, this could be interesting, and at my age, I could handle psychologically such an experience, unlike in my youth. I had nothing to lose. I applied and was accepted to participate, and whatever expectations I may have had going in, the psilocybin had an entirely different agenda, which I still cannot fully explain to this day. 
the days of preparation prior to taking the psilocybin became invaluable to me. Lengthy interviews, questionnaires, delving deeply into my life story, talking and listening, and heeding any advice and guidance given me to prepare as much as possible for this experience I was about to embark on. Meeting all those involved in this work was quite an honor for me. This three-day preparation stage was deep, necessary, and to me, in hindsight, critical to this process. I had absolute trust in my guides, Mary having been the lead guide, and felt fully comfortable and in the most capable hands to proceed into the, this most vulnerable state. I admit I was anxious and scared as to what may lay ahead. The morning of my session arrived and I was taken to a calming and comfortable environment, reminding me of a cozy den, interesting artwork, dimmed lighting, comfortable furniture. A beautiful ceremonial acknowledgement of the sacredness of this medicine was held with staff and then I consumed my first dose. What was about to take place continues to rock my world. I lay down on the couch with eye shades darkening my visual field and headphones playing music in my ears. Mary and Teresa reassured me they would be present throughout and available for all my needs. I trusted them completely. Initially, the pleasantries were enjoyable, the music was soothing, and my focus was on attempting to relax and calm my anxiety. The beautiful and colorful geometric designs began to appear and move across my darkened visual field with randomness and frequency. This went on for some time, and as I'm relaxing into this, the visions began. As these experiences are difficult to put into words, words not sufficient or deep enough, I will do my best to explain. I now found myself in an ancient existence without having a physical form. I felt to be two eyes peering off into the distance and witnessing a most unusual scene taking place in a faraway, barren land. Desolate, empty, stark, devoid of all color. Gigantic rock formations with boulders of enormous size are being broken up by huge, muscular men wielding pickaxes over and over again, breaking the boulders down into smaller and smaller pieces using all of their might. This was another place and time. I felt I was sinking deeper and deeper into this landscape as the witness, the observer. Fear began to set in. What did this mean? I remember being told to stay fluid, stay with it, yet in my mind it was all becoming dangerously sad, unforgiving, bleak beyond all understanding. I then realized with 100% absolute certainty I was being shown the truth of reality, the absolute meaninglessness of life, that life had no meaning at all, the unbearable despair I now felt set in, despair beyond human conception, so deep, so real. I was convinced everything, no matter what, myself included, was all meaningless, had no purpose, it is all an illusion. Words cannot describe the depths of despair into which I had been plunged, only to learn the truth. There is no truth. At this time, I sat up, removed the eye shades, 
took off the headphones and said to Mary, I should not have done this. This is detrimental to me. She came over to me and with loving care and kindness sat with me and held my hand, assuring me I was okay, suggesting I stay with this, let it flow. She gently assisted me to lay back down, which I did. As I lay there with my eyes closed, I begin to see the broken rocks now up close. I am still the eyes as witness and something within these rocks appears to be shining, shimmering, something beautiful to behold. A single sparkling piece of beauty within these piles of broken stone. I realized it was a gem, a single glistening gemstone and the profound realization the gemstone represented me. A sweet lightness overcame me. A love which I didn't recognize filled me. A sense of connection, myself and the gemstone being one and the same. Then out of nowhere, a booming sound began loud and clear, repeating right here, right now, over and over and over for what seemed an eternity. I sparkle, I shine, I have worth amongst the ruins. I am right here, right now, surviving, living in this moment. This is all there is. The rocks of despair had been crushed, my ancient self destroyed. Live in this moment, right here, right now. What a powerful message. What a gift beyond all gifts. The guides at my side were indispensable throughout this experience, and their presence allowed me to complete the session with the reassurance I would make it through. Besides having my children, this was the most profound experience of my life. After the session was over, I was exhausted. So many things going through my mind. At the time, it disturbed me greatly that I had experienced such a deeply felt personal perception of total despair. I was confused as to the depths into which I had found myself. The integration meetings which followed helped me tremendously to sort out some of these questions. How was I to integrate this experience into my life? Through discussion, it became apparent the sparkling, beautiful, single gemstone was of significance in relationship to myself, my self-worth, the connection with how I saw myself prior to the session, and the revelation post-session of the gemstone and me being one in the same. I believe this experience showed me where I was living in despair. The boulders, the smashing of the rocks, represent the destruction of my old self, the doubting one who could no longer see any meaning in moving forward. I felt true love for the first time. For myself, my life, those around me, I felt connected. The separation I have always felt dissolved. And equally important, the message, right here, right now, lives in me every single day. It is my mantra. It is the message I repeat whenever I need a reminder of who I am, what life is, and yes, that is all I have. This moment, right here, right now. This has carried me through the last years, regardless of circumstance. A major and life-changing shift occurred for me that day at Hopkins. The impact of this experience in my life continues today. It unfolds in unexpected ways. It has evolved into me and I into it. Even writing this brought new and profound understanding and insight which I had not considered before. 
Since my initial diagnosis, I have had metastases to my brain on three different occasions with a new area of suspicion, suspicion being closely monitored. I have been treated, I have been treated successfully so far and can say to you today, the cancer does not frighten me. Living does not frighten me. Death does not frighten me. I do not frighten me. I have experienced great joy and great sorrow over these years. With ease, I move forward with self-love, feeling connected to all things, living this life right here, right now. Thank you to Johns Hopkins and the incredible staff doing this very important work. I am eternally grateful. And thank you to all of you for allowing me to share my story with these mere words. Thank you. <laughs>